exoplaneteers, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm an astronomer at MIT. I'm really excited to be here today because yesterday, some of my fellow astronomers announced the discovery of seven planets. So this is awesome for so many reasons. First, this is the most planets that we've ever found that transit a single star. Second, most of them are small. They're Earth-sized or smaller, and that means that they're probably rocky. And then lastly, three of them are in the habitable zone, and that means that they could have the right conditions for life. If you want to know more about why this system is so fascinating, you should check out Moya McTeer's companion video to this one, where she'll tell you more about it. One of the reasons why I'm really excited about stars like TRAPPIST-1 is that they are the most common type of star in the whole galaxy. They make up three quarters of all types of stars. Moreover, we know that planets are very common around these low mass stars. So that means that the most common type of planet in our galaxy is a planet that orbits a low mass star. The star that these planets orbit is called J2230629891. Um, so that's a mouthful. Uh, when the first planets around the star were discovered, it got dubbed uh, TRAPPIST-1. Um, so maybe we'll just go with that. So TRAPPIST-1 is an ultra cool dwarf star. It's barely large enough to be able to fuse hydrogen in its core, which is what you need to be able to be called a star at all. So its diameter is about 11% the size of the sun, which makes it only a little bit larger than Jupiter. You can see that in this comparison here. Depending on how you look at it, stars like TRAPPIST-1 have either very boring or very interesting lives. Now, I'm an stellar astronomer who studies stars like TRAPPIST-1, um, so I'm gonna go with the interesting lives. One way to summarize the difference between stars like the Sun and stars like TRAPPIST-1 is that everything takes longer on small stars like TRAPPIST-1. It takes a while for stars to grow out of their wild partying adolescence years and mature into the older stars as we know of them today. For a star like the Sun, it took of order 100 million years for the star to grow out of this youthful adolescence. But for a star like TRAPPIST-1, it took a few billion years. So one implication of this is that the stars that are currently in the habitable zone of TRAPPIST-1 didn't used to be. They actually used to be too hot. Young stars are also a lot more magnetically active than older stars. They emit a lot of UV and X-ray radiation, and they flare frequently. So these things are bad for habitability. The planet's surface is bombarded by UV and X-ray radiation, and the planet's atmosphere could be stripped away entirely. You might already have an intuition that x-rays are bad for life, because when you go for an x-ray scan, you might remember being covered in a lead apron to protect you from that high energy radiation. So are the TRAPPIST-1 planets habitable? I don't know the answer to that, but I'm really excited that we're gonna be able to use this system and others like it to test the hypothesis. Thanks so much everyone for watching, and I hope you're as excited about the TRAPPIST-1 planets as I am. If you wanna learn more about the system, check out the link at the end of this video to hear Moya's take on this planet. If you wanna keep hearing about all of these exciting developments in exoplanets, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you on TRAPPIST-1. You're like, oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the perfect take. <laughs> Young stars... <laughs>